these past few years, we have been spoiled with so many great survival horror franchises returning in the form of full-blown remakes. Alone in the Dark, Dead Space, Silent Hill 2, Resident Evil 2, 3, and 4. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I have actually enjoyed most of these remakes. In fact, I hope we get more coming our way. But man, there are times I just miss the traditional survival horror experience. Maybe it's nostalgia talking, but you know what? Who cares? After all, there's a reason these games were classics in the first place. The claustrophobia that one could only get with fixed camera angles. The lack of focus on combat and instead more of a focus on the atmosphere filled with terror and dread. And of course, the voice acting. The incredible voice acting that you could only get in that golden time period. Don't shoot, I'm a human. In comes Echoes of the Living, a trip down memory lane that truly takes you back to the classic world of survival horror. And don't take my word for it because it says so right here. Our journey opens up with Octavia Blade, a private detective who appears to be in the middle of a big murder investigation. It also appears as if she's hit a major roadblock in the case. Oh, come on, what am I missing? When out of the blue, she gets a letter. Huh? What's this? And has sent her running right out the door into a place that contains explicit scenes of violence and gore. Kind of reminds me of another video game protagonist. I got a letter. The name on the envelope said Mary. Though luckily, this lead in the case comes on a Thursday night. Because while it may seem that Octavia is dedicated to the job, she definitely blocks her weekends off. Because unlike James Sunderland, she actually is happy in a relationship, if you know what I mean. We end up in the middle of nowhere, in an abandoned mansion, and this is where the nightmare truly begins. The floors creaking as we walk through the hallways, the wind blowing in the background, mysterious noises surrounding us. Immediately, the developers have set the proper atmosphere of the game. Not only this, but within the first 10 minutes, we are introduced to most of the key elements that make a classic survival horror title. Great atmosphere? Check. Finding key items? Check. Zombies? Check. Puzzles that open up secret passageways? Check. I would say the only element missing is a safe room and item chest. However, we got most of the important parts tossed our way before the title of the game even flashes on the screen. We then switch gears and play as Liam Oakwood, who unlike Octavia seems to always be prepared. I mean, she forgot to bring a flashlight when going to a creepy house in the middle of the woods in the middle of the night. What are you doing, Octavia? Where's your flashlight? While Liam, on the other hand, can't even go for a lover's weekend trip without being armed to the teeth. Excuse me, sir. Yep. Weapons are not allowed inside the motel. You must leave them with us, and they will be returned to you upon checking out. Jesus, look at that knife. Who is this guy? Was he raised by John Wick and John Rambo? Although, maybe the man has a point, because after a short nap, he wakes up to a complete bloodbath. This can't be real. Fuck. Got to be kidding me. Now I'm sure at this moment you have many questions going through your head. What could have caused this? With so much blood, where are the bodies? How in the world did Liam sleep through all of this? Either way, once again, the game never misses a beat. We have spooky moments, we see things lurking in the shadows. We have to find key items that allow us to progress through the game's story. We even get a puzzle that involves a safe combination where we have to run through the hotel, looking at the different room numbers, paying attention to odd and even numbers and their color scheme. Who runs this hotel anyway? Oswell Spencer? 
I was to become a god. <laughs> Creating a new world with an advanced race of human beings. Jeez, could you imagine if he actually won and got his race of advanced humans where everyone has to run around and solve these stupid puzzles just to do ordinary things like opening a door or playing Moon Knight Sinatra on a piano to unlock a secret area in the house. Ooh. What is that? But enough talk about Umbrella and his weird employees. Let's get back to Echoes of the Living. So yeah, this prologue demo was really good. Like I said before, it had everything I could ask for in a traditional survival horror game. It had great lighting, a great atmosphere, cool combat mechanics, I loved the camera angle, I loved the goofy voice acting, and it even had some small details that really helped bring the game to life. For example, when you first encounter the zombies with Octavia, they look so much more sickly. I mean, look at this guy. He basically looks starved. You can see the bones through the skin. You can see the eyes sunken into his skull. In fact, his dead body is actually decaying to the point where it is literally falling apart. It is perfectly clear that he's been dead for quite a while. Meanwhile, Liam on the other hand, when he encounters the zombies, they seem much more fresh. You can't see their bones. You don't see the eyes sucking into the skull. I know it's just a small detail, but it is so great that in this short demo, we're already seeing different models used for the zombies, instead of just sort of rehashing the same one over and over and over again. It adds to the game's world and lore. The undead look different in these scenarios because when Liam encounters them, they're fresh out of the oven. Meanwhile, Octavia finds them after they've had plenty of time to rot away. This is one game I've been keeping my eye on for quite a while, and after playing this prologue, my hype levels have gotten even higher. I really cannot wait for the final product. I'm very excited to see how the game turns out, and for a title that's being developed by only two people, I'm beyond amazed at the quality and passion that has been poured into Echoes of the Living. But I would love to hear what you all think. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. By the way, if you made it this far and did enjoy the video, let me know by dropping a like. And if you are new, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon. As for me, I got a lot of work to do, so I'm going to get back to the grind and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.